All right, I'm going to start off uh, the weekend video and say uh, that uh, I think I'm going to be uh, somewhat wrong. And by that, I mean, uh, I, I think the bull market is going to end sooner than I was expecting. But um, I, I also think the secular bear market that's going to follow this will be uh, shorter than expected. So even though I'm, I, I expect we'll have some kind of secular bear market, I don't think it's going to last as long as, as most secular bull mar bear markets do, which is usually um, 10 years or longer. So uh, first off, let's, uh, let me um, show you what I'm looking at on the S&P here. Uh, we've got, you know, we, we kind of started this whole um, mess back here in 2018 when uh, the the Fed had just uh, kept interest rates too low, too long, printed too much money. The market had started to go parabolic. And uh, and that was the point at which uh, we either had to go, uh, you know, into a parabolic bubble or we were going to have some kind of crash event. And, and of course, the answer is we had a crash. Uh, and that was just the beginning. Uh, that crash uh, incited central banks to... Um, redouble their, their printing efforts, um, and the market recovers, goes on to make a slightly higher high, uh, and, and then, of course, that um, creates another, another crash, the crash in, uh, in the um, uh, winter of 2018, and this crash was much bigger than this one. So the, the Fed, uh, this was the point at which um, the fundamentals had started to deteriorate, and uh, we're trying to pull uh, the market down. And the Fed, central banks were fighting this with uh, massive uh, amounts of uh, liquidity. And so they're, um, they're, they're rescuing the market, but it's creating uh, bigger and bigger volatility. Uh, and so uh, we get, get the crash here. And of course, that um, triggers you know, massive amounts of printing. The repo market starts to lock up here. Uh, the Fed goes on a... Uh, you know, an even bigger printing spree. If we get this kind of semi-parabolic uh, move, and, and you, as many of you remember, I was calling, you know, saying that this was going to create uh, another crash, and uh, and that's exactly what happened. And and this one, of course, uh, even bigger than uh, than the crash in 2018. So you can you can see what's happening here. The the fundamentals are trying to pull the market down. The uh, the ec economic fundamentals are, are deteriorating um, and the political fundamentals are deteriorating. And so uh, central banks are fighting it with liquidity. So we're, we're getting this um, uh, more and more extreme oscillation one way or another. Um, we get the crash, then the, the printing starts, we, um, the markets move up and they move up further than they should. That triggers an even bigger crash, uh, more printing, heavier printing, bigger crash. And um, I think, let, let me expand this chart. All right. So this encompasses pretty much the whole bull market. Uh, I think that we have probably started um, the bubble phase of this bull market. So you've heard me talk about pulling the slingshot back in gold. I think that's what we did here in, in the stock market right here is I think we pulled the slingshot back and, uh, and this um, panicked central banks and they've just gone on a mind boggling um, QE um, spree that has um, ignited this V-shaped recovery. And, and I'll show you the NASDAQ because the, the bubble is going to be in the NASDAQ again, just like, just like it was in 2000. All right, um, so you can see from, from most of the, the bull market, um, price kind of stayed in this channel. It started to overshoot that channel here in uh, uh, early in the year when, um, like I said, when the repo market started to lock up, um, we, we get the, the crash. Um, that uh, loads the slingshot, so to speak, I think. And now we, we have clearly just um, blasted through any kind of... Uh, you know, natural uh, channel here. So I I suspect we have started the bubble phase. 
Now, we're, we're due, uh, even bubble phases uh, tend to get, they tend to get pretty volatile as they uh, get mature. And they usually last about a, a year to a year and a half. So I don't, I don't think this is going to end until, um, you know, um, spring or summer of next year. But we're, we're getting pretty late in this intermediate cycle. So I think we're probably going to be due for a, a volatile move back down. Let me, um, let me convert this to the weekly chart and show you the moving averages. All right, uh, so you, you can see price has just gotten, you see what happened when price got really stretched here. It, it triggered this massive crash. Um, I think we're into the bubble phase, so I don't, I don't really anticipate we're going to come back down and tag this again. This was, um, in my opinion, this was probably the final tag. This, this was, as I said, loading the slingshot. But um, as a bubble progresses, there, there can be a, extremely volatile events during the uh, the last part of the bubble in 1999 uh, and 2000, the NASDAQ had um, several periods where uh, it would drop 10% in, um, you know, two or three days. Um, so a as we get more and more mature in this bubble phase, we, we probably be should expect some uh, extreme volatility. But I think, um, I think you want to buy that volatility uh, as I... Uh, as I think we still probably got, you know, another uh, six months, maybe more to go uh, before this bub bubble pops. And, and we're, uh, we're, we're probably setting up for a, a fall, an, a, like an October scare, you know, some kind of October crash. Um, again, I don't think we're going to come all the way back down to, to uh, the 200-week moving average. But, um, you know, a 20% pullback would not be out of the question at all um, and and that's probably going to be the last buying opportunity before the market just goes completely parabolic nuts um, and, and then at that point you uh, you know I, I don't know any way to pick a top in a bubble and I've never seen anybody do it with any consistency at that point you just have to use the con control greed method and when you're happy with your gains just get out and don't look back so you don't get caught in the crash and here's a, another, um, you know, extreme warning sign that that something uh, unnatural is happening. This is the chart of Apple, and you can see uh, coming out of the bottom of the slingshot, Apple is just, you know, it's just going straight up parabolic, and, and it's probably going to continue to go straight up parabolic. Al although, like I said, we've probably got uh, at least one extreme volatility event here coming this fall uh, before we. Um, uh, you know, turn and, and continue going much higher. You know, I, I don't I don't think it's out of the question that the Apple could get to a thousand dollars before this bubble phase is over. Uh, now uh, let's look at gold because the the same driver that um, is powering this bubble phase in gold is also going to power what I think is a bubble phase in gold as well. I think uh, the bubble phase in gold will come after uh, the bubble phase. Uh, in stocks, very similar to how um, the uh, last um, uh, bubble in commodities, uh, specifically that one was in oil, uh, followed on the heels of uh, of the housing bubble. And let me uh, uh, let me go uh, uh, move this chart back, and I can show you that. All right, so you can see here um, this uh, the uh, end of uh, 2007 was the top of our bull market in stocks. Uh, the housing market had topped back here in uh, late uh, 2006. Uh, the banking stocks had started to diverge, which they're doing again. Let me um, uh, pull up. Uh, I'm going to pull up this chart of, of the banking stocks, and, and you can see uh, uh, the same thing is happening. So um, the, the stock market topped here at the end of 2007. You can see the banking stocks topped uh, before that. And you can see we've we've already got a problem developing here in the in the financials. They topped way back in 2018, and and they're lagging badly. That's uh, that one of the signs that I look look for that uh, can uh, be a warning that we're you know in the very latter stages of of the bull market. All right, and this is the CRB. This is um, the the bubble in in oil. 
So you can kind of see what happened. The, the stock market topped right in here and started to go down. And um, the, the Fed were, you know, was printing huge amounts of money, had cut interest rates to near zero in an effort to re reflate the housing market. It, it didn't work. Uh, housing continued to collapse. The stock market topped and started to go down. And, and that um, liquidity started to go into the commodity markets and it fueled the bubble uh, in the CRB and, and specifically in oil. And so you can see oil topped um, about uh, eight or nine months after the stock market. So uh, as liquidity was coming out of housing and um, in the stock market, it was flowing into the commodity markets and we get our, our top um, in the CRB, our bubble top uh, comes uh, after the top in the stock market. So I think the same thing is going to happen. So let me go to the gold chart. All right. So um, you can see we've uh, broken out above the um, 2011 all-time highs, but um, this move is, is not producing a sustained breakout. We're back down here testing. We've actually tested this twice now. We've tested 1923 twice. Multiple tests of a support zone usually break. Uh, you can see my price is stretched a long ways above this 200-week uh, moving average. Not, not usually a good sign unless uh, we're starting the bubble phase. And I think, I think we are going to start a bubble phase in gold. I think it'll, it'll top after the stock market tops, very similar to how the CRB topped about nine months after the stock market uh, back in 2008. Um, but I, I don't see, um, the, I don't see a, a loading of the slingshot yet in gold. So um, that's what I think we need. I think we got that with the collapse in the stock market in March. I think that was loading the slingshot and, uh, and I think we are now starting the bubble phase in stocks. I think we still need to load the slingshot in gold. Uh, and then uh, as you know, everything moves up out of that, uh, what I think is probably going to be some kind of a mini crash in October, um, I think gold will, will start its bubble phase. Stocks will already be at least halfway through their bubble phase. And then uh, when the stock market bubble pops and, and uh, uh, the parabolic move starts to collapse, I think that liquidity will flow into the gold market. And I, I would expect a, a bubble uh, in, uh, in the gold market to top uh, probably similar to how it did last time, somewhere between six and eight months uh, after the top in the stock market. But we need to, we need to load the slingshot first. So we're, like I said, we're, getting, we're starting to get multiple tests of this breakout. And so my expectation is, is at some point here, uh, this, this breakout is going to fail. When that happens, there's going to be a lot of stops trigger and, and we're going to come down and probably we're going to get, a, you know, a, a, a decent correction, uh, you know, maybe back to the 1750 level, maybe even as, as far back as maybe 1650. And I think that loads the slingshot in gold and sets the stage for the bubble phase in gold to start. Um, you know, six months behind uh, where it started in the stock market. And then uh, I think uh, the bubble phase in gold will probably top about six to nine months after uh, the top, the bubble top in the, in the stock market. But because the, uh, the, the bull market isn't really all that long in the stock market, it's only, um, uh, what, about 11 years, uh, and bear markets usually last about a third to a half as long as, as the preceding bull. So uh, because of the extreme monetary policy that's been implemented here and the uh, massive volatility it's creating, I think that may shorten uh, the, the bull market in stocks and we may get our top next year uh, on you know year 12 instead of the normal 20 to 22 or three years that, I, that we, you would normally expect. And uh, because the, the bull market itself would be a bit short, then I think the bear market would also be a bit short. And also the innovation cycle isn't, isn't um, uh, mature yet. So uh, I would say that, you know, if, if we get a, a parabolic move and a crash, then the, the bear market's probably only going to last two or three years instead of um, 10 like it did, uh, nine or 10 like it did um, the last time. And then uh, we'll, we'll have another uh, bull market that starts in uh, in stocks maybe uh, around 20 25 something like that 26 um, 
and, and that bull market will be uh, driven by the uh, maturation of the, uh, you know, all of the new technologies, uh, AI, nanotech, robotics, autonomous transportation, you know the list, I've gone over them before. Uh, those um, industries and sectors um, are not mature yet. So uh, I think uh, monetary policy may cut this, may um, create the bubble phase a little premature in the stock market, uh, but um, I think the, the secular bear will be shorter than what w one would expect. And then I, I think uh, those uh, industries will mature and we'll get another um, secular bull market in stocks uh, after, uh, I'm going to take a guess and say after 2025.